We're back. <laughs> All right, I am getting ready to finish my third row. And it is getting quite a bit easier to weave. I'm not feeling like I'm so much of a fumble fingers. And may I say, Cheryl, thank you so much for having me over tonight. It's always nice to spend the time with friends. <laughs> well, like you've been over quite a yeah, and we've, been spent a, and we've been spending a lot of time together, and, and let me say it has, it's really been fun. So this is what the reed looks like when you open it out, up, out of that big long coil. So I'm just going to take one piece out, and this is not that whole coil by any means. I'm going to kind of wind it up here and just dunk it in the water. And I'm just kind of, before I start my next row, I'm just kind of making my, making sure my spokes are straight, kind of evening things out before I get started on my next row. Alright, I uh, actually wasn't finished weaving <laughs> my color in. That is so pretty, guys. It is so pretty. I, want I some, like the variegated a lot. I want some more, so I'm going to take it down. And I open this up and I... Straighten it all out because it comes all wound up in a coil, and so I straighten it out, and then I can just pull out, never pull from the bottom. It doesn't work very well. And then if this starts getting too loose, I'll tighten it up. Cheryl will be doing a class on how to dye your own reed. And that'll be fun because I that use fun. I use red dye. And RIT has quite an array of colors, and you can mix your own colors. And there are dyes out there that are specifically for basketry, but I just use the RIT. So I'm going to secure that, and my water is usually not this far away from me, but I didn't want to put it on the table because it will take up room and it will be in the way of the camera. Could you hand me that towel, please? So, this comes out pretty drippy. So, just use your towel and squeegee it off. Now, if this were darker colors, like I do navy and burgundy and dark green, then I would make sure that I use a, a product that I buy from a supplier that I add to my rinse water for the reed so it won't run. Because if it runs, your basket's wet and it will bleed on here. So this is where I stopped last. So I'm just gonna start with this. I like this variegated, or some people refer to this as tie-dyed. Yes. So I'm gonna look at this as I'm weaving to see if I'm repeating any of the same colors too much. Because it's kind of mixed up. I always did like tie-dye. I love tie-dye. I got in so much trouble. I got into so much trouble when that tie-dye... <laughs> yeah, I got into so much trouble. Uh, when tie-dye first came out, because I've always been a, ooh, I want to try. It's, a, it's something new. It's a new craft, whatever. Well, my uh -oh. mom, my dad. Yeah. Uh -oh, this isn't going to end well. Oh, my parents were at work. And I got this bright idea that I was going to teach all the neighborhood kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So I, I got the t-shirts. I don't even remember where we got the t-shirts. Heck, for all I know, I could have had somebody get them. Anyway, so we had all these white t-shirts. And I taught them how to do their uh, rubber bands and everything. Now, I never got fancy where I can bake those patterns. Yeah, some people are amazing. I, don't, I saw a lady on YouTube the other day that she did this great big, like, wall hanging. And she was taking everything off. And when she got it all undone and all straightened out, it looked like a car. What? It looked like this big bubble type car. It's crazy. It was amazing. It was people, amazing. People's talent just. I know. 
Well, so anyway, I, of course, I got distracted by another story in the middle of my first story. That's not uncommon with me. Squirrel. <laughs> we have four conversations going at any given time, and by the end of the night, we finish them all. Yeah, I can get interrupted and a half hour later go back yeah. and pick up that same conversation. It's a curse, but it's it's a blessing, too. But... So we spent the day tie-dyeing t-shirts in the bathtub. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm sure your mother was so oh, happy about this. Oh, my mom. But you know what? My mom is a wonderful woman. She and is. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> I'm sure I got into some kind of trouble. I vaguely remember hearing, what were you thinking? thinking when you put all that dye in the white bathtub. Now, back then, it was one of those really old white... It's a cloffet? Yes. Oh, there's nothing better than a bath in a cloffet tub. They're so deep and big and wonderful. Luckily, luckily, bleach will take that out. And then I remember being at a basket convention once. We knew better. We were adults. And someone that was staying in our room actually dyed some reed in the bathtub in the hotel. And guess what? Got charged for it. For well, damages. Well, I kind of understand that. I'm not going to say who it was because she could be watching right now. Mm -hmm. But I just put what is my last row in here. Because I like a lot of color, and I have a lot of color. So I'm going to go back to the natural weaving. And that is really pretty. Can you reach that sample one? Yes, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. Ma okay. Well, she is sexy, 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 yeah, ma'am. Right. right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make this a little taller than this one. It's okay, because if I use it for a box of tissues, I'll just be down deeper. And I might want to use it for something different. Mm -hmm. So you do not have to follow the original pattern by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm just going to continue. Okay, so here. now is the dilemma. Well, now you kind of got to think, what do I kind of want this to look like? I wouldn't call that a dilemma. No. I just call that a choice, yeah, a decision. A decision. Isn't a dilemma something more negative? Yeah, and I'm, we're not really negative people, so. All right. Well, that's quite a dilemma I'm in now. All right, so I'm thinking. Are you trying to decide what kind of a pattern yeah. you want to put in? Because well, I really like, what I'm thinking is I'd really like this to be like the popping piece, you know, the pop of color. So I'm thinking maybe two. Or three rows how, of this. How about doing two rows of this, three rows of that, and then mirror it with two rows of that. Oh. And then you'll have your pink three rows popping. Sounds good to me. Shape. And you know what? Guess what? If you don't like Guess it, what? I can take it out. You can take it out and redo it. Now that you're up into the color part, weaving is fun now. It's just like, ah. Oh, it's very relaxing. And you're shaping it as you go along. You're starting to see an end product coming, you know. This is what instant gratification yes. is all about for me. And this is why I do not quilt, crochet, knit, stained glass. Well, guess what? With stained glass, I kind of learned a little bit about stained glass many years ago and decided right off the bat. That's not for me because if I do something I don't like, it's not easy to fix. Right. If you cut a piece of glass and you don't like the color, yeah, yeah, I mean, those materials are very expensive for that too. And that's the nice thing about baskets is it, it's affordable. It's fun and it's affordable. These are way out of reach. to go with this natural weaving and you can see that my spokes are a little bit longer on this side than they are on this side that just means that I didn't center it real carefully but 
I knew I would have enough because you, you're going to cut part of these off if you remember the cutting and tucking. So that's fine. And at any time that you're doing the, you're making the basket and you're a little confused, the great thing about this is you can go back to the detailed segment and see it up close and go over it a couple of times. I just have the luxury tonight to have the teacher at my disposal. <laughs> but if I were home, I absolutely would have referred back a few times to some things, especially starting that first row. That I, I can compare this to when I was taking algebra in college. Oh, yeah, only did like, that. Yeah, like only 10 years ago or yeah, so. Yeah, I took it at 45 again. Uh, well, I was almost 50 when I took algebra again, like for the fourth time after failing. And you know what? I ended up taking it through a distance learning course where I got this the DVD ah. of the whole week's lectures in the mail every Saturday. And I would watch it, and then I would rewind it. And I would watch it again and rewind it because... When you are in a classroom, you can't ask the professor or the whoever's instructing it to please stop and rewind. Yeah, absolutely. They, they don't have time for that. No, they don't. So they're not going to take the time. And so that was the best thing to be able to do that. Unlike doing some classes online for college credit, credit or not that easy. No. Distance learning classes on the computer for college is not easy at all. I, I did it um, simply because I was a single mom and still had to work and it was what I, the time that I could do. Um, and there were times where it, I spent many, many, many hours <laughs> teaching myself, reading, going through the PowerPoints, going through the, you know. It's not a it's not an easy road. No, but college was fun as a non traditional age student. Yes. It <laughs> really mean, is. Well you did it online, so you yes. didn't get the same no. interaction with going to classes. I think I had one two classes. I took algebra in class and I took obviously my speech class in class. And I did enjoy it. I just finished cutting off the insides. Okay. And again, and refer back and now that my pieces are shorter I'm going to just turn them upside down I could spray them with water but I don't want to spray the whole table so I have my bucket of water over here I'm really and liking how this is looking excuse me for interrupting but oh, this is pretty that's all right. this is really pretty yeah I'm liking more, it a couple more rows on it and, and you'll see it pop yeah I think another piece or two since we're going to do three rows. Well, you know what? Here. Uh, where, where is that color? You don't have to actually pull a piece out. Just, is this it right here? Yeah. That, just, just wrap it around the basket right here and, and just cut a piece. That way you don't have to pull out the whole piece. So I'm going to turn these over to the insides. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to do something. Cut. No, never mind. I think I cut it. Then I'm going to measure this to the inside and see where I want to cut it. And that one's almost perfect except trim a little bit. So that's going to get tucked down on the inside. Excuse me. Don't mind me. Sure. Excuse me. So don't mind me. Yeah, thanks for the water in the face. Yep. <laughs> water friends. Okay. All right, so I have a little bit to trim off of some of these. I really like this pink. Well, you're kind of a pink person anyway. I am a pink person. I, I am typically... I love pink. Other than being in the variegated hair that I'm using, I'm not a pink person. And I know why. Because I always associated pink with being a girly girl. And I was a tomboy growing up. I wasn't a girly girl. Yeah, I'm not really a girly girl, but 
I tried to be a tomboy, and yeah, just, I was just kind of an odd kid. Really. Well, I never really liked when the first year, the first time that we were able to start wearing pants or jeans to school, uh, that was like the best, because we used to not be able to wear anything but skirts and dresses, and so when we were able to start wearing jeans to school, that was it. I, didn't, I don't really, really remember have, having to wear a dress. You didn't um, have a dress code like that? I don't think so, no. I kind of lived in a, a bigger town here, but... Bigger town than this? No, but... Your school just didn't care what yeah, you were Yeah, we wearing. just we just didn't. It was, you know, it's you a know, poor community, to be quite honest with you, you know. And well, really, should we be all that concerned about no dress code? I mean, I do understand the concept behind it to hey, some degree, but what we, what know, they were required us to do was when we had to wear skirts or dresses was also wear hose. Uh, there's nothing worse than hose. I'm no. sorry. And so the day that they came out with pantyhose was like, yes. Oh, you're talking hose. I'm talking garbage. Oh, yeah. Blah. Blah. Yeah. Blah. So I just did all my cutting and tucking there. Sometimes when you cut and tuck, this last row will loosen up and it will get what I call this waffle weave look. I'm going to go back and find the place where I started, which is right here. And I'm just going to hold this. I'm going to kind of pinch these together and just work this around. So I'm pulling it with this tool. I may not have gotten it right where I started. I hope I didn't pull it out. You can kind of hear that squeak. You see how much I'm able to get that tightened. Lots of squeakiness. That was really tight. There was the ending. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pull this out where it was tucked so that I can get that back in there and do that little angle cut just like when carpet installers are cutting through that double thickness of carpet put it back into there and then retuck this so I have it all cut and tucked I thought you were going to... No, there's something, there's I thought, something that makes I you thought, feel so good. I thought you were going to start singing. <laughs> and I see we have about 30, 30 seconds, seconds of time on our memory card. We finally got smart and started timing it. So I'm taking these and I'm just lining up the edges here. So I'm going to dump the memory card. And we'll be back. We'll be back. I need some more read.